three, take one. Well, I believe there are steps to be taken before we can even get close to talking about walking alongside. Before anybody's gonna walk alongside indigenous people, you need to learn about indigenous people. You need to learn about the history. You need to learn about the trauma. You need to learn about what is actually going on. And the only way to do that is to connect to indigenous people. It cannot only be found in books. You need to connect to people and really get the feeling of where they're coming from. It's taking the time to make it happen, taking a time to create connections, to create connections that were really never existed, the kind of connections that should have been in place, that colonization ensured wasn't going to happen. So walking alongside for all of us on this project has been an ongoing journey in which folks have been working together to learn and unlearn, and that's been done with care and compassion and humility because we've had to find ways to learn to slow down and listen deeply and to just attempt to unlearn colonial inherited approaches because we're, we're learning together along this journey that white supremacy is something that structured our institutions and in, that includes schools. I also find that it's so important to know that as a teacher, you don't have all of this knowledge of Indigenous uh, history and that it's okay to make mistakes and it's okay to tell your students that you don't have all of, all of the information and that you're going to make mistakes and you're going to seek external resources uh, to help you along the way. For me, the first time that I ever heard about residential schools, I was in my master's program at McGill and I was 30 years old. And uh, they started talking about residential schools and I had no idea what was being discussed. And I felt very muzzled and very ignorant. So I remember going home that night and doing a lot of research um, and trying to learn about residential schools on my own. And the next day, I went into my grade six music class and I just told the kids, we're not doing music today. I need to teach you what I learned yesterday because I never want you to feel what I felt last night, as ignorant as I felt and um, how unjust it was that none of my teachers had ever taught me this important lesson. Considering positionality in relationship to this particular project means starting with self-reflexive work. Understand who you are, where you're coming from, what your perspectives are, and how that impacts you as an educator in the classroom. There are so many examples of how folks have begun this work in their classrooms and lives that really illustrate that this is a journey worth taking. To learn from your experiences and from the people who are with you and appreciate that everybody brings something important to the table and everybody in this case, I think, includes more than just the people, but like the animals, the nature, the, the buildings, all of this. It's important to like take in what's, what's surrounding you. We still have a long way to go for all of the truth to be uncovered. Residential school is only one piece, a large piece of the truth. There's so much more that's yet to come. So becoming aware is one thing. Educating is another thing influencing then. If you're in a position of influence, then work to try to influence things. And how do you do it? You talk to your colleagues, talk to your family, get the word out there. It's time that we stand up together for those who want to stand up together. And if you're not ready, you're not ready. And that's okay too. You've got to believe in it. And you should be doing it because you believe in it.